Welcome to the Bushy Black Brother Network. What's going on? This is Michael, your Bougie Black Brother. And look what we got here. So if you've been following me, you know I did the open box of the Siri HomePod. So I had this for about, i say a month now. And I wanted to hold on to the month and then start talking about, hey, what's been my experience with the HomePod? Um, so there's a lot of couple of things that it can and cannot do. Uh, it goes really well um, in the room that we have it in. It has a great look. As you can see, it's a very great look. And, you know, shiny. And you can rub on it and, you know, make wishes. Um, but it's really different. Um, but it's not the purpose that I would probably have wanted compared to a Google Home or the Amazon Echo. So a little different, but it has its pluses. So I'm gonna go through a couple of test runs so y'all can see what was going on and how I actually used it. And then we're gonna return for like a kind of a recap. And when we come to the recap, I can say, hey, look, this is what I would hope it would have been done and this is what it can't do. And as you saw, I'm hoping it can do better, but we'll go through that. Let's start the testing. Hey Siri, what's the weather in Lawrenceville? It's currently clear and 75 degrees in Lawrenceville. Expect partly cloudy skies starting in the evening. Temperatures are heading down from 75 degrees this afternoon to 62 tonight. Hey Siri, open front door. Sorry, I can't unlock secure accessories here. Try asking me on your iOS device. Hey Siri, turn on. Light. I'm listening. Turn on lights. Absolutely. Here you go. Hey Siri, play some Kendrick Lamar. All right, let's hear Kendrick Lamar. Hey Siri, stop. Hey Siri, text Alicia. Before I can help with personal requests, the iOS device associated with this HomePod needs to be on the same Wi-Fi network. Hey Siri, send Alicia a text. What do you want to say? This is a test for the HomePod in order to receive text. Your message to Wi-Fi says, this is a test for the HomePod in order to receive text. Ready to send it? Yes. Done. Thank you. Hey Siri, could you name me all the reminders that I have? I found these reminders. Handful Epsom salt, 10 drops lavender oil, half a cup baking soda, black shoe polish, echo, lettuce carrots, square Debbie tab, do you want to hear the next five? No. Hey Siri, can you give me stock prices? According to Yahoo Finance, at market close, Dow Jones Industrial Average closed at 24,103.11, up 254.69, or 1.07%. S&P 500 finished higher, closing at 2,640.87, that's a jump of 35.87, or 1.38%. And NASDAQ Composite went up quite a bit, to 7,063.44. That's 114.22 higher, or 1.64%. Hey Siri, what is the stock price for TJX? Shares of the TJX companies rose to $81.56 last Thursday. That's an uptick of 87 cents, or 1.08%. So as you can see, that was a couple of things that the HomePod is able to do. 
And here's the manuals. Uh, so if you look at the top, you can have a touchpad. So this is like a touchpad. So if you really want to do the volume and you call out Siri, then it'll light up and it'll show that indication. So if you up, you can see that colorful little uh, Siri deal right there. So, you know, from the top, it gives you that indication. It's not really going to give you much at all other than a whoop sound as well. But if you're playing music and you have that, that's what you're going to have. So, touch it. There you go. See? Then you raise the volume, raise the volume, lower the volume, lower the volume, lower the volume. And, and, and that's how you can do it manually. But stop in the middle. So that touch screen right in there gives you that touch in the middle. So that was it really with the HomePod. So there's a lot of things it can do and a lot of things it can. So when you're comparing it to a lot of home speakers as well as like the Google Home and Alexa, there's no comparison. They control the home. It actually controls the home. This is very limited. My HomePod can control my lights, which is Philips Hue, which is very limited because those are really, really expensive. It can control my front door um, to lock it, but not to open it, whereby Alexa or Echo can open it um, and close it. So they can do both of those. Um, it's very intuitive when it comes to what I have on my playlist and the music that I have on. If you have Spotify or uh, Pandora and everything, you can only airplay that into there. So you can do a lot of good airplay onto the HomePod, but it won't do anything like the controls, like fast forward, rewind, skip. It won't do any of that unless you actually on your phone. Is another sad thing for some people too. As great as this speaker is, Android, it doesn't sync up to it. So you're not gonna have that either. It doesn't connect to the calendar yet. So that's very, very disappointing because what you really want is to have that communication to say, hey, what's on my calendar for tomorrow? Or what's scheduled for the week? It doesn't have that. It has your reminders and you can put some memos on there, but I need my calendar. Uh, I can text my wife. I can text anybody that's on there and it'll give off text and it'll read text. It can't call anyone. So I can call and transfer it there, but, and I can answer it from there, but I can't make calls to the, to the HomePod. Eh, it's kind of bad too, but mostly I want to be have the ability to cut on my uh, fireplace. I want to be able to cut my lights on in the room, the individual lights other than the hue lights, because it's going to be very expensive to have hue lights throughout a specialty room. So that's not good either. Um, you can do shades, but you got to buy specific shades for that. And I don't like that either. So it's very limited. But what is the highest point on this? The highest point on this is the sound quality quality is fantastic. I picked this up, I brought it to another room and it adjusted. So it was like a deeper bass and the sound traveled really well. I put it back in this room and it was a little higher. So the crispness of the sound and everything and the trebles and was very, very well. So it adjusts well to the room and it's not a tiki 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 or a boom boom boom. It's really right in the middle. It's a very, very, I'm very impressed by the sound of it and the adjustment of the sound from room to room. So that is perfect. So as a speaker, it's fantastic. As regular little things here and there, it needs to grow. The good thing is this is an upgradable device and software updates as it travels over Wi-Fi, it'll get the updates. So there's no reason why this can't be better by the end of the year for software upgrades. But if you line them up and you're saying, I'm going to get this instead of an Alexa to control my home, that's not what it is. Well, 
I'm gonna get this instead of my Google Home because I need to control all my Google calendars and emails and all of that. Nope, that's not it either. So it doesn't do a good job bringing that all together. The sad thing is, uh, with the ecosystem that this actually has, I don't know why not. I don't understand why they wouldn't do that right now. Other than they rushed it to the market. Amazon is trying to take over as many areas as they can with these portable devices. Now they got switches on the wall that you can actually talk to. So they got light switches and you can talk directly to there, except for talking somewhere else than to the light. So they're taking over the home market faster than anyone. Google can't keep up and Microsoft, who the hell are they? But Apple is way, way behind. But it's a standalone speaker that you have all your Apple music on. This is perfect. It, it's, it's fantastic. You can speak through it. It gives you basic things. I can get my stock where I want to, as you saw that. I can uh, choose different music. Uh, I can say use my playlist because I set it up that way. So very, very good when it comes to that. But overall, if you're really looking for home um, controls, home automation and a central hub to get that done, this is not it. Um, it's really not. But for a specialty speaker to say, I need a specialty speaker and I can get that. This is pretty cool. Here's another minus. You can't plug anything directly into it. I would have liked also to have this wireless, meaning I wouldn't have to plug it into the wall. It would have a battery within so I can lift it up and just bring it anywhere. Sort of like the Apple, no, the Amazon tap. So they got that one, that little tower from that and you just tap it, but now you can speak to it. So they changed that. But to have that and you can portably bring that around, that's probably on a horizon. Once they perfect this, they're going to make a portable one. But this is a bunch of if, 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 ifs. Um, first adopters, that's who we are. We are. $350? I wasn't going to do that. <laughs> I just wasn't. So I got a really good deal for it. And when I got the good deal, I ran for it because I needed I didn't want to set up a whole stereo system into a room or have a very weak portable speaker inside of it. I did not want that. So since I didn't want that, I said, why not invest a little over a hundred dollars uh, mid midway between uh, a hundred and two hundred dollars to get a quality speaker that goes with the ecosystem that we have throughout our house. That's just perfect. Cause when you look at it that way, everything kind of works out. But HomePod, um, one out of five, I say it's a three. Um, speaker, high level quality, give that almost a, a 4.5, almost 4.7, because it's not perfect. When it comes to home automation and, and trying to get the things that you need, it's a 2.7. It's a 2.7. It's barely a three. So that's why I brought it up to a three. Maybe a 3.25. So, if this is what you want within your ecosystem and you can wait, go ahead, grab that. It will catch up. But by the time it catches up, there's a lot of other things that's going to be able to bypass what this is able to do because Echo is continually trying to keep up with what that is. So I will be in the future looking at doing a comparison of the three because, you know, we got the Google Home. We got the Alexa Echo, and we got the Dots and the Tower, and then we got the HomePod. There's nothing else that's out there. Um, everything else that's kind of out there either have Alexa or Siri in it, whether it's a car or your thermostats or anything like that. So really, what does these three actually can do for you? Um, and we had them, we had Echo for about two years, um, Google for almost a year, but it just came out. So first adopter, we can't help it, but we're in there. So look out for that. Um, we'll be doing that on Tech Talk coming soon. So glad you stopped by. Um, keep listening. Um, we'll have a couple of other things that we'll be looking at. Um, a vacuum cleaner. We're going to try that one as well. So we're going to try that one. And we're also working with a new brand called Bond. 
and uh, we'll get into that because I'm really trying to work to see how that can incorporate itself into the ecosystem for the home as well. So, Michael Bougie Black Brother, Bougie Black Brother, and we'll see you next time on Tech Talk. Thanks for stopping by.